Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another week of what's for dinner. If you're new here, hello and welcome. I am Taylor. I'm a stay-at-home mom of two and I share these weekly what's for dinner videos with you guys to motivate myself to cook more for my family and to hopefully motivate you guys to cook more for your family and to give you some dinner ideas. So if you like that kind of thing, I hope that you will subscribe down below so you can come back and see my future videos. I also have a playlist where I have like 150 videos. I think I've been doing this for like two and a half years so make sure you check that out that'll be linked down below as well now let's go ahead and get into this week's what's for dinner it is friday night and tonight for dinner we're having something really simple if you're new around here i try to keep friday nights simple because i'm usually editing the week before is what's for dinner it was like grocery shopping day and all that so fridays are usually like easy dinners that i can throw together um, this is one that I love to have things on hand for so I can just throw it all together. So I'm going to be making Parmesan crusted tilapia. I have a recipe video on cheddar crusted chicken and I do this the same way just with Parmesan cheese instead of cheddar and tilapia instead of chicken. So I have preheated my oven to 425. I'm going to season these with some Tony's Creole seasoning. You could just do salt and pepper. It's whatever you want seasoning wise. And then I'm gonna put about a tablespoon of sour cream on each piece of fish. And then in a bowl, I'm gonna mix together some panko, some badia complete seasoning. You could use your favorite all purpose seasoning and, and then some Parmesan cheese. I'll mix all that together and then press it into the sour cream that is on top of the fish. And then this will bake for 15 to 20 minutes on 425 as I said. To go with it, I like to do easy sides. We've got some couscous in here. This is from Aldi. I usually always have some form of this on hand. This is the Parmesan one. And when you make it the easy way, it takes five minutes. I boiled water in my kettle back here, poured that into the couscous and seasoning packet, and then it just has to sit for five minutes with a lid on it, and then it'll be ready. So that's pretty much ready already. And then I'm gonna make a can of green beans. I've got some green beans from Aldi. I will add in some chicken bouillon, some garlic powder, and some pepper, and just let those simmer while my fish cooks. Here's dinner. We've got our tilapia, our couscous, and our green beans. It's just quick and easy, like I said, and it's delicious. But this gets dinner on the table in under 30 minutes, so it's a great quick meal. But that is going to be dinner for Friday. Tonight for dinner, we are having a chicken and rice casserole. We made this once before and really liked it, and it sounded good, so I decided to make it again. I will have the recipe link down below for you guys. Elijah is going to help me cook dinner tonight right? Yes. So for this, we are using canned chicken just because it's easy. So, and I have some I want to use up. So I've got two cans of chicken that I'm going to drain and we're going to use that. 
And then I've got a box of chicken flavored rice and vermicelli. And we're gonna cook that according to the package directions. Um, but we're gonna cook it like on the lesser end of time. It says 15 to 20 minutes. So at 15 minutes, we'll pull it out because it's gonna continue cooking in the oven. And um, this calls for two tablespoons of butter and we're gonna saute the rice in that with seasoning. And then we'll add some water and we're gonna add in some carrots, celery, and onion to cook up with that and start it, give it a head start on getting soft. And then we've also got some cream of chicken and sour cream and cheddar cheese that we will put um, on all of it when it goes into the oven. But we're gonna get started on chopping up our veggies and getting our rice cooked over here on the stove. You can put your spoon in that little thing over there. Dump in your rice. Dump it in. Dump it in. Alright. Where's your white or white? The white is the rice. The This is the vermicelli, which is noodles. That's why I tell you sometimes it's rice and noodles. That's when it's that. You can stir it. So once all our veggies were cut up, we basically just followed the directions on the back of the box for the rice. So we melted two tablespoons of butter and then we toasted our rice and vermicelli mixture until it was a golden color. Then we added in our seasoning packet, our water and our veggies, and we let that come to a boil. Once the rice came to a boil, we reduced the heat and put a lid on it and let it simmer for 15 minutes. The box says like 20 minutes, but we did 15 because this is going to continue to cook in the oven. In a casserole dish, we combined that cooked rice mixture with our cans of chicken, our cream of chicken, and our sour cream. And then I also added in some pepper and some Tony's Creole seasoning. And then Elijah stirred this up for me and we topped it with some cheddar cheese. And then I baked this in the oven on 350 for 25 minutes. And then I broiled it on high for two minutes.
here is what that looked like when it came out of the oven. And this is all we had for dinner this night. Just kept it super easy with that. Highly recommend this recipe. We absolutely love it. It is Sunday and tonight for dinner I am making a tortellini little casserole thing. This is inspired by something that I saw Tamara over at Southern Wife Everyday Life make. So I'm starting off by browning some ground beef and I have some dried minced onion in there, some garlic powder, and some Italian seasoning. I'm just going to brown that up and then I will add in a jar of marinara. I might need a little bit more, we'll see. And then I have this big bag of cheese tortellini. Um, I only have half the bag left, so I'm going to add that in there as well, and then put it in my 9x13 casserole dish, top it with some cheese. I've got mozzarella cheese and parmesan cheese, so I'm going to put that on top. Might mix some of it in too. We will see. She um, put ricotta cheese in hers, but I don't have any of that. I thought I had some cottage cheese, but I don't, so I'm just going to leave it out, um, and I will have her video linked down below as well. And then once I get it topped with cheese, I'm also going to top it with some pepperoni and then bake it for probably about 30 minutes at 350. Okay, to go with our tortellini casserole thing, we've got some salad, well, some of us do. I have salad with ranch and tomatoes and cucumbers and a little bit of Parmesan cheese and the everything but the bagel seasoning. Andy has lettuce, tomato, Parmesan cheese, and then he has the Aldi version of the Olive Garden Italian dressing. And then Lily has peppers, tomatoes, and cucumbers. And Elijah has salad with the Olive Garden dressing, cucumbers, Parmesan cheese, and then he has everything but the bagel seasoning as well. And that is going to be dinner for Sunday. It is Monday morning and tonight for dinner we are going to be having chicken and dumplings. I am making them in the crock pot. I am following 
loosely following a recipe from my friend Kat over at Southern Farm and Kitchen. She made hers in the crock pot a couple weeks ago and I've made them in the crock pot and they've been like good and I've made them again but they use um like store-bought biscuits and today I'm actually going to be making my own dumplings to go in this. So I'm excited to try that hoping that it turns out. So in here I have two small chicken thighs in the bottom and then two small breasts in the top. I wanted light and dark meat so that's why I did that. And all of it's frozen but it will cook. I'm going to put this on high and it will cook for a couple of hours and be done. I'm going to top this with some broth. In this I have four cups of water that I mix with eight teaspoons of the Knorr chicken bouillon and then I'm just going to do another four cups of water. I just made that like super concentrated because I heated that water in my kettle. Okay, now I'm going to add in some ground thyme. She did poultry seasoning, I don't have any. So I'm gonna do a little bit of thyme, some garlic powder, some Badia complete seasoning, and then I'm gonna add in a couple bay leaves. And then as I said, I'm gonna put the lid on and put this on high. Okay, my chicken has been cooking for hours. Kat said like four hours, it's definitely been longer than that for me. Chicken is definitely done. I'm going to remove it and my bay leaves, I'm gonna remove those as well. I'm gonna remove the chicken and cut it up and then I'm gonna make my dumplings. And for that I have one cup of all purpose flour and half a cup of milk and I'm just gonna like stir that together with a fork and some salt and pepper. And then I'm gonna lay it out on this cutting board with, I've got some flour for dusting that so it doesn't stick, at least not too bad. And we're gonna knead it and pat it out so that it's thin and then cut our dumplings. And then I will add the chicken, the dumplings, a can of cream of chicken soup, and a stick of unsalted butter back to my crock pot and then let this cook for about another hour.
this is what it looked like after an hour of cooking this was really good the dumplings weren't our favorite but like the broth and like the chicken and everything was really good the dumplings weren't a bad i don't know if i didn't put enough seasoning in them i also feel like it should be self-rising flour maybe um because i feel like they should like puff up a little bit more but i'm gonna play around with the dumpling recipe but it was pretty good we ate it and that's really all that matters and that was all we had for dinner this night Today for dinner I'm going to be making some pork chops and I have mostly thawed these out. They're still partially frozen but they still have a couple hours to finish thawing out. But I wanted to go ahead and get them with like some barbecue sauce on them to kind of marinate them so they'll be more flavorful. And then I'm going to pop this back in the fridge until I'm ready to cook dinner in a couple hours. So I have my pork chops in the bowl and I have this Grillmates Applewood Rub seasoning. I'm going to put some of that on there and then I'm going to dump on the rest of this Berman's barbecue sauce Kansas City style from Aldi and then just let that sit in the fridge until later and I haven't decided if I'm going to bake these or air fry them so we'll see. Okay, it's time to get started on dinner. I pulled my pork chops out of the fridge. I am going to bake them is what I decided because I already decided I was going to turn on the oven to roast some potatoes. So I pulled out six potatoes. I'm, I already washed them. I'm going to cut them up and drizzle them with some olive oil and I'm finally using this Badia ranch seasoning. So I'm going to do some of that and then just some of the Badia complete seasoning and then just roast them. I've got my oven on 425 and this will probably take like 30 to 35 minutes so I'm gonna go ahead and get those in there and give them a head start I've got one pan lined with parchment for that and then I've got another pan lined lined with parchment for the pork chops and I'm gonna look, get the potatoes started and then throw in the pork chops towards the end probably like the last like 15 20 minutes is how long I think the pork chops will take because they're pretty thin so I don't want to overcook them and I don't want them to get cold, so I'm not going to cook those at the same time as the potatoes. Or not at, they're not going to go in at the same time as the potatoes. And then I pulled out a can of green beans, and I will just season that with some chicken bouillon. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of the badia, some pepper, some butter, and some garlic powder. That's probably it. That's usually what I do. Sometimes I forget to mention that I put butter in there, but I do put about a tablespoon of butter in my green beans. So I'm going to go ahead and get these potatoes cut up and seasoned so I can get them in the oven. Okay, here are our plates. We've got our pork chops, potatoes, and green beans. 
That one's Andy's. That one's mine. These are the kids. I went ahead and cut up their pork chops. Andy said he's going to eat his on a sandwich, which would just be bread. I don't know if he's actually going to do that or if he's just saying that. But he might have that on some bread. And then we will have some ketchup to dip our potatoes in. But that is going to be dinner for Tuesday. On Wednesday night, I made cowboy beans. This is a recipe that I originally got from my friend Jess over at Jess and the Boys. I've made it quite a few times, and I will have the link to her video down below as well. I started off by cutting up half of a pack of bacon into little pieces, like kind of like diced it up. I used my kitchen scissors to do this because I find it easy, and I just cooked that up until it was nice and crispy. Once my bacon was cooked, I removed that to the side and I drained the grease from the bacon. And then in my pan, I added in a one pound of ground beef with some minced garlic, some parsley, some seasoned salt, and some pepper. And this time I did something different. I also added in some dried minced onion, which I'd never done before, but I thought some onion would be good in it. Once the ground beef was browned, I began to add in the rest of my ingredients. I added in some pork and beans. Usually it's two of the like 15 ounce cans, but I had one 15 ounce can and then two of like the smaller like eight ounce cans. So I added in all that. And then I also had some baked beans left over in the fridge. So I added those in as well because I just wanted to use them up and not let them go to waste. And then usually I would add in brown sugar, but since I added in those baked beans and they have a sweetness, I just skip the brown sugar this time. I added in some Worcestershire, some mustard, some ketchup, some sriracha, and I just let that simmer for a little bit, covered with a lid, and all of the measurements for all of this will be listed down below for you guys. I probably simmered this for about 15 to 20 minutes. You just really wanna get everything nice and warmed and let those flavors all combine. And then I like to top this with some cheddar cheese. You could do any kind of cheese you like. And I think Jess likes to use American cheese. We just prefer cheddar, it's our favorite, and we always have a bunch of cheddar on hand. So I topped it with that, and then I put the lid on to let that cheese melt. And then once the cheese was nice and melty, I mixed it all in and we were ready to eat. Our favorite thing to serve this with is some copycat red lobster cheddar bay biscuits. I will have the video down below where I made these biscuits if you're interested in the recipe. And that is what we had for dinner for this night. Okay, tonight's dinner is going to be sticky honey chicken. And I actually made this once before and we really, really liked it. It's from a blog called Our Savory Life and it was recommended to me by one of you guys. Um, so I will have that linked down below. So I have started off by cutting up into like bite-sized pieces some chicken and these were actually chicken tenderloins but you could use chicken breasts or even chicken thighs last time i made it the recipe says to just cook it whole and then shred it but while we were eating it we were like we thought it would be better like just in bite-sized pieces not shredded so this is what i decided to do this time is just cut it up so as i said that's about two pounds 
And then in my skillet, I'm heating up some olive oil and some butter. And I'm just gonna cook my chicken in that with some salt and pepper. And I've also got broccoli going in the air fryer. Um, I think the recipe recommends snap peas, but we made it with broccoli last time and really liked it. And then I also have perfect white rice going in the Instant Pot. That's just, um, come, it's like naturally releasing now. So that'll be done when everything else is done. So um, I think last time I doubled the sauce, if I remember correctly. So I think I'll be doing that again, doubling the sauce. But I'm gonna go ahead and get this going and then I will show you the sauce. Okay, as I said, I am doubling the recipe, so I'm going to do six tablespoons of soy sauce, two thirds of a cup of honey, six tablespoons of tomato sauce, six uh, teaspoons of minced garlic, and two teaspoons of sriracha. I'm just gonna get that mixed together in this bowl. Once the chicken was cooked through, I removed that from the pan and then I poured my sauce mixture into the pan and gave that a good stir and let that come to a simmer over like a medium high heat. And once it came to a simmer, I let it continue to simmer until it was thickened, probably about two to three minutes. Then I reduced the heat to low and I stirred in my broccoli and my chicken and I just let everything get nice and coated with the sauce and I let that simmer for probably about another five minutes over low so that it could get nice and flavorful. Okay, this is our dinner. We've just got that chicken and broccoli with the sauce over our white rice. And if you make this, I highly recommend doubling the sauce because you just have like all that yummy sauce to go on your white rice and flavor it. We love this. Highly recommend trying it. That is going to be dinner for Thursday. And that is going to wrap up another week of what's for dinner. I hope that you guys are liking these longer videos. The past two weeks have been over 30 minutes long, which is crazy to me. Um, but if you're liking them, make sure you leave me a thumbs up. Comment down below if you're going to try any of these recipes. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see y'all on the next one. Bye.